Hello, good afternoon, um, and welcome to Baltic Horizon Fund's uh, webinar um, about uh, first quarter results. So let's begin. Um, yeah, we are living during interesting times, uh, especially now when uh, the, the COVID crisis is, is sort of fading away, uh, but we have the war, we have the refugees, and we have the uh, supply chain so shocks and energy energy prices going up uh, with also the inflationary pressures being very, very high. So lots of movables, um, lots of uh, elements that uh, that it's very uh, it's difficult to to predict um, where where all of this will 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 move. But um, but just happy to um, give an overview of of how Baltic Horizon is doing um, in this. Um, in this environment. So um, I'm going to start out with uh, the key notable events uh, during this year for, for the fund. And uh, I think um, definitely we're, we're very happy that, that uh, we were able to open uh, the first part of the concept upgrade of uh, our um, Europa shopping center uh, in Vilnius, uh, beginning of the year, opened uh, the food hall there on the ground floor. Uh, with uh, 10 outlets and uh, 10 food uh, small uh, sort of uh, offerings. And uh, it's been uh, widely popular and it continues to be a very busy uh, lunch, lunch and place in, in Vilnius today. So very happy to see that the surrounding uh, office building workers have um, have slowly returned to the offices and, and uh, it seems to have their, uh, in the neighborhood, uh, one of the most uh, favorite uh, places for lunch. Uh, we're working now also on, on promoting the, the location for, for after hours for dinner and, and for, um, uh, for sort of after work, after work drinks as well. So, so I think there's still some potential there and, and um, and this is this is a reconstruct part of the reconstruction project we started last year. Um, and uh, the the second part is is the the um, uh, on the other side uh, of the of the concept change where we are upgrading the look and feel of the center and, and having new escalators in place. So um, I think what we want to be here is, is ready for the next cycle and, uh, and uh, seeing the people come back to the offices, which, if you know the area, is, is a very densely, uh, densely built uh, centrally, central business district of Vilnius, where uh, new skyscrapers have been built and, and are going to be built as well in the future. So more customers coming. Um, but anyway, um, talk about that a bit later as well. Um, we are very happy to um, uh, receive uh, a, a, no a notice from uh, Standard & Poor's as well on, on our rating and uh, they have reaffirmed our rating uh, 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 this year as well at the same level. So um, regardless of the challenges that we've had with, uh, with the lockdowns, um, we have maintained uh, a good, uh, good level of, of uh, risk and return, and uh, Standard and Poor's have been rating us since 2018 when we launched the bond, and um, will continue to monitor uh, the funds uh, progress also in in the future. Then, uh, most recently. Um, we have uh, extended many of our bank loans, and uh, this uh, beginning of this year was was very important for us to uh, prolong uh, two of our um, largest loans uh, for uh, two of our largest uh, properties, Galeri and Europa, also the the, the ones that uh, were uh, influenced by the lockdowns. But uh, we're really able, really happy to to have prolonged those loans. Uh, for 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 a period of, of uh, two to three years, and uh, at quite similar conditions. So um, good good to see that the banking market is is healthy in, in the Baltics, and our cooperation with the banks uh, is very very strong. And um, 
uh, this year and end of last year was uh, was uh, the start of of uh, prolongation of our our loans so um, it will continue in uh, for the for the next 12 months as well very active period of, of uh, renewing other loans um, uh, is is going to take place and i will explain a bit more so later on um, now uh, most recently we have invited investors to the uh, annual general meeting where a more thorough presentation will be made on, on, on last year's uh, results and also uh, this year's performance. Uh, so, um, but we have also put um, on the agenda a, 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 a buyback program, uh, which is something that um, is to, is, needs to be decided by the investors and uh, further, further uh, managed uh, and, and uh, coupled with the local financial authorities, uh, supervisor authority. But um, this is a program to put in place for, uh, for three years. And uh, it's a tool that we want uh, to have in the management toolbox, um, uh, which we currently don't have. <clears throat> and um, <clears throat> if you go look at today's market price of of, of the fund, then um, I'll, I'll be very direct here. It's it's un, 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 understa not understandably uh, low, and uh, considering that uh, you know year from now it was 10-15 percent higher, and the fund was in a much uh, worse uh, uh, situation with the lockdowns. But uh, as you know, the market is always right. But but. Uh, but this is a program that uh, that we need in place. Uh, also, looking looking into the future. Um, so, continuing with uh, with the portfolio summary, um, uh, there hasn't been much uh, much change. Our focus has been on on um, on our portfolio, on the assets uh, that we have in the portfolio, mainly the the retail properties. To enhance them, to uh, to bring them to the to the next uh, cycle, and um, our segment sort of uh, allocation uh, is still majority is offices, uh, the, around 58% uh, in terms of net rental income, and uh, and retail uh, <clears throat> being the the remaining part. Um, I think in the future, in the future quarters, the retail. Uh, percentage will probably be increasing because of the recovery of the NOI in the, in the um, two largest shopping centers, um, uh, what we expect. Um, <clears throat> and uh, in terms of uh, uh, maintenance, there hasn't been either any real, real changes. Uh, so uh, in that sense, uh, the portfolio the tenant structure remains uh, solid. Uh, going forward into the future, uh, I think we are more inclined to uh, increase our uh, allocation to Estonia and to Lithuania and less so to Latvia. So, um, and that means um, uh, also new acquisitions. So, <clears throat> also there before the webinar, we received quite a few questions. So, I hopefully will answer those. Um, uh, during uh, during the presentation, um, one of the questions was, uh, you know, where, uh, when, and where do we estimate uh, the recovery of of our two largest assets, being Europa and, and Galleria? So um, before that, just uh, I think an interesting uh, column to look at is a direct property yield, to, which shows the. The NOI of the of the property in, in the first quarter um, compared to the acquisition value. So I think um, uh, overall our our office buildings have been have been doing quite well as well. The Omus Pro. Uh, so uh, the um, <clears throat> the focus has been yes on, on recovering the the NOI of of Galleria and and, and Europa. In Europa, um, uh, effectively the uh, the direct property yield should be should be higher. It was some one-off uh, write-offs that uh, were also in recorded in in the Q1. Uh, so we do expect a continuous recovery of 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 both of these centers uh, going forward. 
uh, also for, for the Postimaya uh, complex. Now, um, I think the full recovery of, of, of both centers uh, to, the, to the levels, NOI levels that we had uh, uh, before COVID will still take uh, <clears throat> some time, uh, probably into, into 2023. And um, so um, I think overall, um, what we see and what I've also stated uh, before is, is that uh, our portfolio in, in full, full occupancy should deliver around 22, around 22 million in NOI um, uh, per year. And uh, last year it was uh, 17 million. So uh, the, the 5 million, which was written off uh, mostly because of the uh, lockdowns and, and the, uh, the induced uh, these uh, rent reliefs. And, and mainly in the two uh, two centers, as you know, they were closed almost uh, half a year. Um, but um, we do uh, aim and, and expect uh, at least you know close to half of that being recovered uh, this year. Um, so um, we have already also received some government support uh, for the lockdown from from Latvian government in in the amount of three hundred thousand euros. So, so that helps as well, um, and uh, we expect to then uh, uh, achieve the pre-COVID NOI for the portfolio uh, probably next year. So it's it's a recovery process. I think it has uh, started very well. We are definitely in recovery mode. We see that uh, uh, in our footfalls um, of the two largest centers and as well uh, the turnovers. And uh, without, um, you know, the the tourists, um, it, the the footfall has been has been increasing still very strongly. So when the tourists are coming back, that that's definitely additional bonus for us. They are they are returning, and we see that around Postima definitely already. Uh, we see also uh, quite a lot of uh, um, uh, tourists in, in in Riga old town. Uh, in Galleria centers already in Europa, tourists are less important for us because in Vilnius, uh, Europa is in the center of business district where uh, you know office workers and, and people that that work there are are key for us. So so um, we do have high hopes definitely for the second half of this year in terms of recovery, people going back to the offices and um, and living a more uh, certain in a little more certain environment. Then more about uh, our uh, focus in, in, on, on the assets that, that we have, that, uh, that we own, and then the, the redevelopment and development projects. Um, so Europa uh, redevelopment is almost finished, and um, it includes as well the uh, interior design the new look and feel, uh, cozy look and feel of the of the street that that goes uh, through the um, uh, through the center, and uh, to have a new shop uh, shop facades and and as well new tiles, new escalators, uh, new lifts, uh, new visibility, and um, and definitely new corners uh, and and uh, areas for for people to to spend time on um, something called amphitheater, which I think we uh, when we open it uh, will be something very unique in Vilnius, you know, for 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 people who visit to to spend time on to work. Uh, potentially to eat and um, and to meet. So that is finished. The next up is, uh, is Galleria Centres Food Hall. Um, that is uh, planned to be launched uh, this summer and uh, planned to be finished uh, end, of, end of this year. And uh, when it comes to Europe, uh, when it comes to the third project, uh, retail project, which is the Postima and Coca-Cola Plaza redevelopment, then, we have also started there um, by expanding the cafeteria, uh, Reval Cafe, uh, and bring that more to the street level, have access 
from the street directly, uh, also offer um, uh, sort of uh, steps, uh, you know, for people to to spend time in and then have lunches and meetings. So I think once opened in August, uh, it will be a fantastic venue uh, with glass facade and, and uh, in in the middle of the, the intersection there. Uh, so um, in regards to the larger uh, plan, um, the next up in Postimaya uh, cinema complex is um, the ground floor of the cinema and opening the, the building up to the Protarman Square. And uh, we have prolonged uh, the agreement with the cinema, the, the, the old agreement by another five years. Um, there has been changes in the uh, some some changes in the ownership. So the minority owner has now bought uh, out uh, the, the majority owner. So uh, uh, Apollo Group um, is now our our tenant, and uh, and uh, we're 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 happy to um, uh, give them more efficient space by you know planning to take over the, the ground floor. Uh, where we we can also execute our plans and and uh, the cinema operator can focus on the on the cinema floors um, and uh, the new the the whole reconstruction in the middle uh, there are plans to continue with that but uh, without tanker tenants uh, it is difficult uh, we don't want to build this as a speculative project without uh, anchor tenants in place at the beginning and and uh, COVID was was uh, prolonging uh, the the relationships with the anchor tenants, new anchor tenants, new brand names coming to the Baltics, and um, and after COVID uh, slowed down, uh, we had the war, and again, uh, new retail tenants that wanted to enter the market uh, were 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 deciding to to still hold so. Uh, but time will come when when more certainty will be in the in the markets and uh, and I think uh, international tenants, uh, new international brands, they they will they do see Baltics as a, a a destination where they want to expand to because no one can really, despite of the cost of living going up and energy crisis. Um, they cannot just ignore also what has happened with the uh, salaries of the, of the average salaries of the Baltic um, uh, inhabitants, and, and that has come up uh, doubled you know, almost in, in, in 10 years, and especially in the last three to five year period. Uh, so uh, city centers um, uh, are coming back and uh, it will take a bit, a bit of time for, for them to recover fully. But uh, we're very optimistic uh, today, uh, seeing seeing how how things are happening in terms of in terms of their yeah, people people visiting. For Meraki, um, the first tower and the under full underground parking uh, for thousand places, uh, close to thousand places, is is almost finished. Uh, we we did have a small hiccup there uh, over the last uh, month uh, because of the contract con construction company having issues with the employees because of the, the war, um, but uh, those were resolved quite quickly. Um, no uh, impact on the on the cost, just a bit on the, on, the, on the time. So, um, but we are planning now to open open this property up for tenants. Uh, 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 within within a month, and uh, new tenants uh, moving in, especially to the ground floor. We have a clinic coming in, and, and uh, we are in active tendering for the for the anchor tenant. Uh, several visits happening. The Vilnius office market remains uh, remains quite active, and uh, and especially for uh, for the for the tenants that are already operating in the market. So. Um, so quite uh, quite high expectations on that. Um, in regards to um, the second tower, um, we we are currently not building the second tower, but uh, have plans to build it uh, um, in the coming periods. But that also depends on an anchor tenant being available. 
So we will continue to, to search for tenants also for the second tower. Um, and um, of course, it is now a big question mark uh, how much uh, the construction prices have increased. And so we may need to wait for, for some stabilization there. Um, yeah, it's interesting to, 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 to look at the construction sector now in the Baltics where many, many projects are being put on hold. So, um, so the question is that um, at, w at which point will, um, will, 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 will the increase of, of construction prices uh, stabilize? And, uh, and if you know, construction companies will, will have less and less work and, and, uh, and less demand for materials, um, uh, that may actually uh, you know, stabilize uh, the construction price or even, even start, start lowering it at some point. But um, I think we need some resolve definitely for the, for the um, uh, supply chain and uh, for the materials. And uh, I know that construction companies are actively looking for, for solutions there because it seems that cooperation with Russia in many, many ways is um, is terminated and uh, and uh, the conflict there will, will probably continue for for some time. Um, so new solutions need to be found. But uh, yes, we we do expect uh, you know when the project is is finished and uh, to have a, a strongly yielding uh, cash flow property. Um, we're aiming you know seven to eight uh, percent yield depending on the construction price and the rental levels, there's definitely push also on the, on the rental levels um, in the markets um, because less and less properties are being built and, and, uh, and new properties are asking uh, generally already 10-15% uh, more than they originally um, asked. So, so um, let, let's see, uh, but, but currently, yeah, we are focusing on, on getting the first tower filled in so that the G4S building uh, that we sold, uh, the, uh, the income can be replaced uh, there in Meraki. And uh, as well, uh, what we did with, with G4S building, uh, we basically switched an old building you know, to, the, to, to, to the new building with Meraki has Bream excellent certification uh, as to note as well. Um, coming back to the numbers, and uh, here you can see the development of the fund um, and uh, across across um, also COVID years, and uh, we definitely see the the recovery now in the in the in the second second quarter, especially uh, first quarter was still. Uh, relatively difficult for us where we had to record um, many, uh, many reliefs uh, because the negotiations take time with tenants um, uh, reliefs for, for last year, uh, end of last year. And, uh, and our NAV today is um, around 1.1. And uh, I find it again very strange why, uh, why the unit price is trading at 0.9. Uh, because of the, of the recovery, which 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 is happening, but um, when when was asked also one of the questions when when do we expect uh, the NAV to uh, return to the pre-COVID levels, which is around 1.3, 1.3, 1.35, uh, then um, I would answer it in the same way that it depends uh, highly on the recovery of Europa and, and Galleria centers. And uh, as I noted, uh, we expect you know, half of the lost NOI to be recovered this year and uh, the remainder next year. So uh, we do expect some improvement in the NEV this year. And, and uh, by next year, uh, we aim to achieve the, the pre-COVID NAV uh, once again. A few more words about... Um, the profit and loss of the of the first quarter so uh, it shows uh, definitely already recovery and without the g4s income um, majority of the recovery came from from galleria centers but also indexation of of office uh, building rents uh, that happened uh, and uh, europa's recovery 
will will um, will also continue to to happen. Um, just to note that Europa, some premises have um, have been uh, closed due to reconstruction, but the shopping center has been uh, open uh, throughout reconstruction. When the reconstruction finishes in June, uh, we have several tenants moving in. So uh, I can already say that uh, there is definitely expectations that the vacancy levels will will drop. Um, and and closer to 10% uh, during during the summer. Uh, so, um, <clears throat> but overall, uh, we managed through the, the first quarter and, and continue to to uh, to to foresee the yeah, recovery. Then, <clears throat> no major changes here. Um, we have uh, valuations coming up now in June. Um, yeah, we'll start uh, start in June, and, and uh, the valuations will be known by 15th of July when the June NAV is issued. So, so um, hopefully, <coughs> we see continuous recovery also in the valuations. And uh, but um, let's see how valuators look at the. Um, at the current environment, uh, but um, but we don't see any major uh, disruptions at, at this point. Um, we have continued to just invest in the first quarter in Meraki, so majority of the of the cash uh, has been invested there and and also in 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 Europa. So um, <clears throat> let's say after after June uh, the 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 major investments will, will inter, into internal projects will probably uh, decrease and and um, and we will continue to then as well focus on on uh, releasing the premises that are vacant in order to bring back the cash flows uh, something uh, maybe maybe to mention uh, here is as well that uh, the trade receivables um, uh, have slightly increased uh, during the first quarter, but, but we, which are which are basically unearned, uh, un, unpaid uh, uh, rent from from for tenants. But uh, it has also continued to show signs of improvement, and um, and we're happy about that. Going into the uh, the other side of things, and there were quite a few questions on on that as well. So I'm uh, let me try to explain a bit how we see our loan portfolio and uh, refinancing of our loan portfolio going forward. So um, the the seven, uh, almost seventy eight percent of the of our loans or, or let's say our debt is is fixed. Uh, either it's a, it's a direct uh, confirmed coupon in, in bonds or uh, hedged uh, hedged uh, loans. So um, and this this also fits into the the strategy of the fund of having approximately eighty percent of the of the debt fixed at any any given moment of time. Um, Euribor is expected to increase and. Um, uh, Currently, it's unknown, you know, uh, how quickly and and, uh, and to what level uh, Euripol will increase. Um, probably, it will increase uh, first to um, to positive side, and then gradually closer to one percent. Uh, depends again on on what's happening in the inflationary uh, environment. Um, I doubt that uh, that the Euribor will increase so aggressively, like uh, in in the states, because uh, inflation in the states uh, has been uh, very much uh, due to um, direct support of the of the government uh, to to the people and and to to really <clears throat> increase their their income and 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 that has really pushed uh, the spending up and and that uh, the prices of services. And and uh, especially services over there, in in uh, in Europe, the uh, inflation is 
directly linked to the crisis that we have uh, with Russia uh, predominantly and and uh, the uh, let's say the the energy prices and then the, the prices of uh, commodities um, um, uh, going going up so uh, so um, let's say let's see how quickly that can be resolved and and what will be the end solution but i'm sure ecb is, is looking at that um, very much and um, and uh, but we will probably see some increase in in euribor uh, already this year and um, the question is that will this affect um, and and how how uh, if if at all will, will it affect our loan portfolio uh, and the cost of debt uh, then <clears throat> i can answer this uh, today that uh, our cost of debt uh, has been slightly increasing uh, during covid times and uh, it was pre covid it was 2.6 percent and uh, now it has increased to 2.8 percent it will probably continue to increase a bit um, but i think uh, the final answer can be given uh, when we have uh, refinanced all of our loans i don't think the margins of of uh, the office portfolio loans uh, as you see many of our uh, office loans are going to be refinanced now in the next uh, uh, year um, or so so um, uh, we uh, we don't expect any major margin increases there, and, and we we would plan to have sort some sort of hedging, uh, even though it is slightly more expensive to hedge. Uh, you know, there's various instruments for hedge, so uh, there are caps and and um, more reasonable options. And but we have to take that um, uh, those decisions when we actually prolong the loan. So it's difficult to say what the hedges are costing uh, you know six months from now or, or, or 12 months from now um, but i think the margins will will not increase uh, in, in majority of our properties and uh, and uh, when the question is then what do we do with the bond uh, since um, the debt capital markets uh, are definitely um, not in the best state for 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 bond issuers like us, uh, so uh, we're working on that uh, right now to see you know what would be the the coupon that uh, that uh, if we're all over the the bond, but um, we're definitely also looking into refinancing some of that bond with bank loans because uh, you know currently the banking se sector is very healthy, offering good margins. Um, uh, good terms so um, we may actually decide then for the next three years period to um, refinance uh, some of that bond um, with the bank loans and then then see three years from now what is the uh, debt capital market situation so this is um, this is definitely ongoing and um, I think there will be more news in in that regard um, uh, over the next uh, quarter or so. Um, because uh, we are already working on it on, on the bond uh, now, uh, despite that uh, the term of the bond is in, in 2023 May. So we aim to find definitely all these solutions and then refinance also our properties uh, earlier um, than the terms are actually arriving. So this year uh, will we'll be heavily. Uh, focusing on refinancing of the properties and on prolonging the debt maturity, which has currently decreased to 1.5 years. Uh, going forward uh, about about dividends. So um, um, again, um, every quarter um, for the past two years has been uh, actually quite uncertain for us. You know what are the what are the lockdowns? What sort of uh, reliefs we need to give? Uh, um, you know, what what is the future? But it definitely seems like uh, that at least locally, uh, any major lockdowns is not anymore a, a, a is something that that any of the governments would would uh, consider. There could be some restrictions. Uh, could be some you know masks. Uh, that may come back or uh, limitations of, of big events maybe. 
but um, but we do that. We, I think at the moment, and regardless of the war, uh, uh, we are feeling more, more certain than than ever over the past two year period um, about the future and the recovery. So the tourism globally is also very much recovering uh, in Europe. Uh, the, the flights are close to pre-COVID levels uh, being still, you know, they would be much higher if there would be no conflict uh, in, in, in the East. But, um, and, and uh, the recovery of, uh, of the tourists in the Baltics is also a bit slower because of that. Um, but, um, you know, I, I don't want to talk about talk about about the war too much because uh, really nobody really knows how how much uh, how, how long it will take and what would be the outcome but um, but it's definitely good to see the the united front uh, from the from the europe europe side and uh, and if uh, something something notable may happen uh, as you know um, finland and, and sweden are planning to to join nato so uh, that's definitely a, a positive sign to the to the overall region, and um, I think over long term it will contribute to the success of the Baltic states as well. Um, you know, making making this area more more solid, uh, uh, more in, in sync, and, and definitely I think attractive for 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 also to, tourists. So uh, so let's see how how this pans out, but but definitely long term opportunities. Um, as well, but coming back to the to the dividends and and how quick, quickly that can recover to um, to uh, to the pre-COVID levels. Um, again, you know, I think quarter by quarter it will be it will be recovering. Um, if, if vacancies continue to decrease, and um, we are making some some capex uh, capexes as well. Uh, so that may influence a bit the the, the, the fast recovery, but. Um, but uh, overall, I think um, again we, we we have the plan to to regain what what was lost half of it you know by end of this year and and uh, the remainder uh, by the end of uh, next year and um, and it's um, what I see as well you know the cost of that uh, probably is going up a bit uh, for us but uh, but I'm quite satisfied that we are able to index as well our rents. And uh, not by you know fifteen or twenty percent uh, uh, because of the caps usually in the lease agreements, uh, but uh, but definitely more than than in the previous years. So this helps as well to uh, to counterbalance the uh, uh, you know the the added 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 uh, cost uh, sides uh, such as uh, interest cost and and uh, and some capex works. Um, then um, just to just to have a few um, general uh, general sort of comments on on our retail portfolio and what trends do we see in the, in the next three to five years uh, and and what we really want to what harness also for our portfolio. So first of all, uh, food is the new fashion that is clear. Uh, the, 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 the people in the Baltics are definitely looking for for good culinary experiences and that it's not only the Baltic trend but but uh, especially here right now it, it sticks out so so um, and that's why our offering uh, we want wanted to have a quality offering in, in Europe and uh, not only visually and, and really having good materials good outlook so sort of good 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 visualizations good uh, sort of uh, uh, experience but but also good food and and good offerings so uh, so that's definitely a new trend that that we need to continue with and and as well we're addressing that in Postimaya with the with a new Reval Cafe concept uh, also probably new restaurants uh, will be will be coming in the next uh, 12 months in the in a cinema ground floor um, definitely focusing on that and um, and uh, my fitness as, as our tenant in, in Birita, which, which is actually expanding in Birita right now, uh, taking more space, uh, rejuvenating their concept there. Um, also in Poistimaya, um, uh, definitely a, a tenant that, that we foresee in, in those properties in the, in the coming years. Uh, they have recovered their, um, their visit, visitors quite well and, and continue to do so. So uh, 
so so health and and wellness uh, you know it, it, it will be part of the the offering in the in the in the in the shopping centers in the future uh, also also clinics also also health uh, health services and um, and uh, regardless of the war yeah when uh, when during the war uh, actually our footfalls increased uh, quite rapidly so uh, people are spending uh, you know the the savings uh, yes there is uh, um, influence on the cost side energy prices um, going up and and uh, for some it's still so it's it's a bit of a paradox that uh, for some it's definitely you know uh, impeding their their uh, propensity to spend but but then again what we see from our numbers is is that uh, that retail spending is going up overall so um, it could be as well uh, because of the the uh, unequal distribution of, of uh, wealth and incomes that that could be one reason but but also recovery probably of the tourists and um, and uh, and that's also what we are we are expecting, you know, for our properties, uh, the key performance indicators uh, related to uh, the tourists and citizens coming back to the city center. And um, then to finish up with with some sub slides, uh, this is uh, now Europa's uh, new food hall uh, called the Dialogue. Uh, we have some Ukrainian food uh, joint uh, there and, and, and uh, several others. So, so um, if you are visiting Vilnius, and uh, please, please do have lunch there. I think it's a good offering. And uh, some visualizations also for our uh, fourth floor uh, Galleria Center's uh, food hall concept. Uh, uh, we have actually already signed up, if I recall, seven out of the 10 operators. So uh, I think I think it's an excellent venue, also with the, with the terrace that we can uh, bring in there. It's old Sportland premises. Sportland, uh, we have moved to the third floor, so the fourth floor will be uh, the destination for uh, for foodies. And uh, excellent uh, interior design designers from um, from Latvia here. And uh, what we also aim is, is to, when, when the interior design project is finished, that we actually do what we, what we sell to the, to the tenants and to the customers and, uh, and not cut corners because uh, customers definitely um, uh, don't appreciate if, um, if, uh, if corners are cut. So this is investment for a long term period and definitely for, for, for another cycle, for another 10 years. And, uh, it should, should be one of the focal points in, in, in Old Town of Riga in, a, in the future. And uh, we are as well negotiating with a couple of uh, new anchors in, in, in Galleria centers for the ground floor. Again, new brands um, that have been now a bit hesitant because of the war, but, um, but the time will come when probably they will have to make the decisions. And uh, in summary, then, um, uh, finishing, well, what, are, what are the plans and what are the, um, uh, the key, key sort of uh, thoughts um, and, and, uh, and uh, actions? So uh, is to finish Europa reconstruction and, uh, and uh, that should be finished within a month. Um, Galleria Centers Food Hall to start that. Uh, we have prepared for it already for six months and want to start executing uh, now during the summer uh, to have it ready by the end of the year. Um, working on the Postimaya uh, food uh, outlets, uh, the cafeteria to, to start the reconstruction project there as well. And um, also focusing on, on, of course, on the ESG matters, um, uh, upgrading building management systems to get more data. Uh, we already did have all of our office buildings certified now we're looking into our, our retail objects um, and, and and analyzing the data to um, uh, to improve um, our CO2 um, and footprint, which we aim to decrease as well drastically over the next over the next next uh, decade. Uh, so um, 
but uh, yeah, for, as I mentioned as well previously, very heavy focus with our uh, partners at CBRE, um, who are managing our portfolio uh, on a, on a daily basis uh, to to uh, to release all of our vacancies in, in Galleria in Europa. There is definitely some progress already made, and you will see that uh, in in the in the Q2. Uh, report, uh, but but going forward uh, as well to to finish the reconstructions and um, and uh, moving the new tenants. Um, so it would take a bit of time. Um, what we are also doing is um, like an example with G4S. Um, we are recycling our portfolio, selling some of our older buildings uh, and replacing them with new ones um, that we feel are more. Uh, sustainable and, and um, perform better in the in the competing environment in the future, um, and uh, we'll be focusing also on on certain, on, on the new new acquisitions. And we we do believe in in new office uh, new offices uh, around and near the city centers uh, in the clusters, and um, and we definitely viewing logistics opportunities as well. We've had several. Uh, Logistic properties under due diligence, but uh, for for uh, reasons, uh, or maybe for, for technical reasons, uh, or the conditions, technical reasons for technical conditions, and um, and and, uh, and also reasons of of uh, not believing in the future of that location, we have dropped those. Uh, Premises, so I have to be careful with logistics, um, um, especially now when uh, when uh, I have to analyze the, the tenants fully. You know how much are they affected with the with the uh, with the, with the trade uh, restrictions and um, and uh, restrictions coming from the east. But you also have to analyze very carefully that you know there was a property that we looked at, but. Uh, but we, we understood that people don't want to come to work there because it's not convenient and uh, and uh, um, sort of uh, unemployment is very low so um, difficult for tenants to find uh, sometimes uh, employees and of course logistics is is moving towards automation automation in the future so we're definitely looking for brand new premises in that segment but um, but yeah so far the focus has been on upgrading. Um, our own portfolio assets and 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 really making sure that that uh, uh, the new attractiveness is there for the for the next decade. And last but not least, we have a new website coming. I think it will look very cool, um, very much uh, more friendly. You know, where where investors can find information and uh, and want to promote ourselves as well in um, in a, through the communication channels across across the Baltics. Uh, um, to really reach investors and, and uh, show them that we believe that uh, that our unit price is definitely undervalued uh, today and, and should be at a, at a much different level. Uh, so um, it's almost that you know when you look at the our our portfolio that that uh, the unit price represents that our portfolio is 25% or 20% less than the. Than the valuations, which I think are anyway also sort of conservative. So, um, so yeah, um, that is the summary uh, for this time. Let me see if there's any questions. So, first question about the rental indexation um, and how how what is the what is the possibility? Um, uh, indexation in the rental contracts is is quite different, uh, and uh, but most most of the uh, rental uh, agreements have caps, and uh, usually it's um, around five percent. Um, there are also some at, at three percent. Um, so um, I think the truth is probably there. So. Um, when it comes to a retail segment, then uh, uh, in retail segment, I think uh, we will see more uh, potential uh, in um, in the turnover parts of the of the of the of the rental agreements uh, going forward with the recovery. 
Uh, but I think it's also unrealistic to expect, you know, 10, 15% indexation of, of the portfolio over the next uh, 12 months. But, uh, but I think uh, definitely more than, than uh, 1% that we usually have had over the past uh, uh, years. Um, in regards to the Meraki loan refinancing, um, uh, is uh, we have Meraki um, <coughs> loan um, or, or the, the, the bond, uh, the term is in November this year. Um, we are um, have already started discussions uh, with the banks um, and uh, and. Uh, what we are offering uh, to the banks is, is probably a fund guarantee. So, so uh, it we are looking for the for the anchor tenant, and we do hope that we land an anchor tenant uh, uh, in the in the premises uh, by 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 the fall. So uh, then to to refinance with the bank will be will be quite easy. Uh, in case of uh, I think um, more more adverse scenario, we will. We may we may um, uh, want to prolong the the low the, the term of the of the bond by one year, but uh, currently I think we're quite optimistic that we can refinance with uh, with uh, with the banks um, over the next six months. So um, the question is, when do we think that Meraki will be ninety percent let out? Uh, the answer to that again is, you know, we are in negotiations or discussions with some of the anchor, potential anchor tenants. If we land an anchor tenant, it will be pretty much leased out fully, and um, and uh, that's that's the goal. So uh, we aim again to 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 have a very high occupancy by by fall this year, so we can refinance uh, as well more successfully. And the building is there; visits are happening, so. Um, and uh, the, the price that we're offering is is around 12 and a half uh, euros per square meter. Uh, so um, considering what's on the market, uh, well, uh, brand new buildings, uh, we are definitely the cheapest. Uh, the ones that uh, are also we are competing with are are, are in, uh, having expectations of 13, 14 euros per square meter as as, as starting rent. Okay, um, I don't see any more questions at the moment. Uh, I def definitely recommend uh, all investors to um, keep an eye on our NAV announcements, which are taking place uh, on the 15th uh, of every month. Mm, and uh, I think that will start to show a, a trend for continuous trend for recovery. Um, uh, yeah, beginning of the of the year, we were we were um, averaging one point you know three one point four million euros of rental income per month. In April, we had one point five. So uh, hopefully, that uh, trend will uh, will continue. Um, and uh, pre pre COVID uh, level of the NOI monthly was uh, close to one point nine. So. Um, that is uh, what we are aiming for and yeah with the with the recovery of of uh, shopping centers and um, vacancies dropping and uh, releasing uh, the vacant spaces and um, and we're releasing out meraki that should definitely uh, help to our favor but overall yeah the office uh, office segment remains stable uh, for us So thank you for participating and um, and hope to be in touch uh, soon.